Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our second example of how to solve a nonlinear equation with just one variable. So here we have a trinomial and it's set greater than zero. So what values for x will satisfy this inequality? Well, one thing to do here would be first to see if we can factor this. So let's write it into factor form. If we do that, we end up with something that looks like this, greater than zero. And so here we have x, hmm, two numbers. When you multiply, you get 6. When you add, you get 5. So it looks like x plus 2 and x plus 3 should do the trick. Because when we multiply 2 times 3, we get 6. And 2 plus 3, we get 5. So that looks like the factored form. Now we can go ahead and try to solve that. Before we do that, we need what we call the critical points. In other words, we're going to now write the equivalent uh, equation instead of inequality. So x plus 2 times x plus 3 is greater than 0. Oh, not greater than. I wanted to write it as a, an equation, not as an inequality, like that. And so now what we're going to do is we find the points that satisfy that equation, which become the critical points for this inequality, the endpoints of the regions that we're looking for that will satisfy the inequality. So when we have two numbers or two entities multiplied together to get zero, that means either one or the other needs to be equal to zero. That means that x plus two equals zero or x plus three equals zero, which means that x equals negative two or x equals negative three. Those are the two critical points which gives us the endpoints or limiting values of the regions we're looking for to satisfy this inequality. If we draw that on the number line, we get the following. We get uh, the number 0 here. Here would be negative 2. There would be negative 3. Notice since it says greater than and the equal sign is not there, it does not include those endpoints, which means we're going to draw circles around it. And that tells us that there's three regions on the number line. The region number 1, which is to the left of negative 3. Region number 2, which is between negative 3 and negative 2. And region number 3, which is to the right of negative 2. And one or two of those regions will satisfy this inequality. We now just have to find which of those. Uh, let's see here. We can do that by finding some test points. A test point in region number 1 may be like negative 4. A test point in region number 2 is maybe negative 2.5. And a test point in region number 3, and whenever you can, use the number 0. We'll take the number 0 to represent any point in region number 3. What we're going to do now is plug those into our inequality and see if that then causes that inequality to satisfy the condition that it's greater than 0. So starting with negative 4. If we plug negative 4 into x, we have negative 4 plus 2 gives us a negative 2, which is a negative quantity. And if we plug in negative 4 in here, negative 4 plus 3, that's negative 1. That also will give us a negative quantity. And when we multiply two negative quantities together, we get a positive quantity. And the question is, is that greater than 0? And the answer is yes, of course. A positive quantity is always greater than 0. So that means we pick the point in the region that satisfies inequality. So therefore, negative 4, along with all other points to the left of negative 3, will satisfy that inequality. So we go ahead and make it darker like that to indicate everything to negative 3 will satisfy this inequality. Not including negative 3 because we don't have an equal sign here. Okay, now we try another point, negative 2.5. When we plug in negative 2.5 in here, negative 2.5 plus 2 will give us a negative quantity because that's negative a half, and that's negative. And negative 2.5 plus 3 gives us a positive quantity plus 5. And when we multiply a negative times a positive quantity, we get a negative quantity. And is that greater than zero, question mark? And the answer is no. Because a negative number can never be greater than zero, which means this region is not part of the solution. Finally, we try our last point, the point zero. When we plug in zero in here, we get zero plus two. That's a positive quantity. Plug in zero here, zero plus three is a positive quantity. When we multiply two positive quantities together, do we get a number greater than zero, question mark? And the answer is yes, of course. And therefore, any number to the right where zero can be found is also part of the solution. Of course, not including negative two. So what we can write, any number less than three, so x less than negative three, and union, any x greater than negative two, that will then be the total solution of this inequality. So we're looking for all numbers that are less than negative 3 and all numbers that are greater than negative 2 and that will then satisfy this inequality. 
That's how we do that.